Uh, it's time for some scuba. Shams, you kind of broke the internet yesterday. It was one phrase under any circumstances was trending within like 12 seconds of you tweeting <laughs> out yesterday. Do you want to you want to take it away on the Dylan Brooks situation? Yeah. So the the, the Grizzlies <laughs> had exit <laughs> interviews <laughs> on Sunday in Memphis, Ooh, and uh, in in those exit interviews, I'm told the Grizzlies informed Dylan Brooks that they are moving on from him. Um, you know, under no condition do they view bringing him back. Uh, his tenure in Memphis is over. He turned out an extension early in the season. Um, talks ended after that, and clearly there's not going to be a deal for him in Memphis. It was a tumultuous end of the season. Not only the back and forth with LeBron, he had just 10 points in that series against, against the Lakers on 13 shots, 30% from the field, 20% uh, from three, a couple missed defensive assignments. We know the, the, the punch that led to the eject, ejection on LeBron. <laughs> Um, you know, he was also suspended a couple times this year for technicals. So oh Lord. He, this is a guy who spoke at the end of the season about wanting a bigger role. Um, and, and I do think there will be a level of interest among contending teams <laughs> in Dylan Brooks. We'll see what his market is like, uh, but he will not be back in Memphis. And let's and not get it twisted. Wearing really jorts close, multiple times didn't help his cause either. <laughs> I, I saw with Chandler's. You can't, yeah, you can't. You can't be doing that. I was like, God, Lee. Can, I, I wonder if Chandler can pull that look off. But I did see Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> he is from Florida, probably. I did see Chandler's <laughs> comment uh, on Instagram about Dylan Brooks. Chandler, what, what, what's, what say you right now? <laughs> I, I got multiple takes on this, honestly. And I, I didn't think it'd come to me defending Dylan Brooks, yes. but I. <laughs> I have a real problem with the Grizzlies. First of all, saying this in late April, early May, it's not like Memphis is this huge free agent destination. Uh, so the fact that they're saying that, and yes, was Dylan Brooks annoying? Yeah. Was he obnoxious? He's turned into this person that I, he wasn't like that when I was with him in Memphis. And he actually was a good dude. And, and he's taken on this this personality that has has caused him his future in memphis but what I'm, my point is he was a critical part to their team all season long and this team was the two seed they were pretty consistent all year long john morant had his issues dylan brooks was a consistent part of the success of this team he wasn't very good in the playoffs and he did cause a lot of distractions so i understand where they're coming from but Let's not act like they're just going to hit home runs in free agency and they can't possibly use Dylan Brooks next year. And, and so I have a problem with it, with the team making this public kind of kicking him when he's already down and being, and yes, it's self-inflicted. Yes, he did himself. And Dylan Brooks, I said on Instagram, he played his hand completely wrong here. Um, but I don't like the team doing this. I don't like, I understand what, just don't resign him. You don't have to make it public. You don't have to let Shams find out. Like you don't have to publicly yeah, embarrass Shams. him. In May. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I get it because again, he has become this person that not a lot of people like, and I'm sure the people in the organization don't like him, but kind of tacky in a Bush league move for me to, for a franchise to get this out this early before free agency even starts. Like they're just going to hit home runs, getting someone better than Dylan Brooks. I don't see that either. Well, in fairness and far be it for me to protect the man here, but um, I don't know that the team released this. This felt like it was a sympathy ploy perhaps on the Dylan Brooks side of thing because of the phrase specifically under any circumstances, which is an absurd wording to put into anything because it's, it's like using the word never forever. Yeah. It's we could call you on this one and we might at some point. Yeah. So I, I want to ask you, A, have you ever heard of anything like this to say under any circumstances? Like it felt very weird and it must have been because of the reaction it got immediately after you posted it. Yeah, no, I've never heard anything like this in, in that situation, which was kind of crazy. It made me stop when I read it. And I'm <laughs> like, damn, that's aggressive in April. But at the same time, too, I think what Chandler said, it's not like it's a crazy hotbed for free agencies. Right. But at the same time, that locker room's a little different. Like, I think what makes them so special is you know, how to get along together to chemistry and camaraderie. I don't think you can throw just anybody into that locker room and they all, you know, you know, blend well together. So. I, I do think, though, this is a sign that they're trying to change the locker room in Memphis and they're trying to turn the page on mm. this year. They were disappointed, not only the John Morant incident uh, with, the, with the flashing of the gun, but just the, the off the court. You, you saw, the, I mean, not for me to say, but Zach Kleiman, their, their GM, executive mm -hmm. VP, their head coach, Taylor Jenkins, they came out after the season and said, we want to get away from the trash talking. And I think a, le a level of decorum, professionalism in that organization to win. Um, but listen, I, if they're going to get better this summer, it's not going to be via free agency. It's going to be, they've got a boatload of assets. They've got five first-round picks that they can trade this summer. They've got three draft swaps. They offered a handful of those picks for Kevin Durant last summer. 
they're going to be in the market for when you talk about top shelf players this summer, Memphis is going to be right at the top of the list in terms of trying to get a player. And if you can go get a star and add him with John Morant, Jaron Jackson Jr., Desmond Bain, you, you upgrade. I, I do think the weird winner of all this is somehow Draymond Green. What? <laughs> and I want to know what he knew about that Memphis team when he said, yo, the dynasty is going to happen. That but he's without going you. there? But uh, look, the wording is strong and the wording is so specific. I trust Shams was reporting, obviously, that it had to have happened. It had to have been said. Somebody wanted it to be out there. And it's, you know, under no circumstance, that's like, yo, we are taking you out. Don't don't let the door hit you. You enjoy. He wasn't the problem. Like, are they saying this to Desmond Bain, who did not have a great series? Are, are, are they saying this to Jaron Jackson, who struggled in his own in the series? Are they saying this to the guys who had heard who weren't there to be available? Uh, you know, there's a lot of blame to go around on yeah. that team and to make him the scapegoat. I mean, yeah, your fourth and, option. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's a lot. I don't know. <laughs> you know, again, they're going to have to do this in trade market, and we'll see. It, it, you know, they might want Carl Anthony Towns, and they might end up with OG and Anobi, and it's a much different world when you end up between those two different players. Um, but, yeah, I mean, look, you're not going to pay Dylan Brooks 20, 25 million a year. Hell Let somebody no. else do it. That's not how you build a good team. But to kick him on the way out like this is it's, a little strange. Uh, by the way, Dylan Brooks learned a very valuable lesson, kids. Like, he was distracting, sure. So was Ja Morant. But Ja Morant gets to stay. <laughs> and you figure that out, okay? You know now. So you can't you can't play by the same rules as, as the face of your team. Because yeah. the distraction is the same. The smack talk was still there. But Ja's not going anywhere, ever. Um, that being said, Chandler, what... Where is he going, Dylan Brooks? You got to pick a team today. What do you see? Uh, I like him in Dallas with, with Kyrie Irving and Luca. Uh, they're a team that needs toughness and not necessarily another distraction. But I do think Dylan will learn from this and he'll realize that this was more negative than positive, especially in the media and, and all the things that come with him. And, and at the end of the day. Dylan Brooks is a role player, and he's a good role player, and he can score the ball, he can defend, he's tough, he's fearless, and a lot of teams lack that. I can see, you know, Denver could use a guy like him. Uh, Phoenix, anybody that has a good offensive team that has stars that needs to be protected with a wing like this, he has value. And I see all this stuff, the, the Shanghai Sharks or the Beijing Ducks, and that's, I think, just Laker fans talking because as annoying as he's become, he's still a valuable player. He's still a versatile player. He was wildly inefficient through the playoffs. And I think he was forcing, trying to prove points, trying to do more than he is. Uh, but he still has a future in the NBA, and he's still going to be just fine. He just needs to mature a little bit and get a little bit more professional. Got some options there, Evan. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Right now, you know, Dylan Brooks, after his sixth season, he's averaging 14 points on 42, 43% shooting, which is pretty good. He's been in tough <laughs> games. He's been on, you know, winning teams. And I think that one thing that you can't take away is he's a competitor. And I think he can tone down his approach, but his natural heart and what he ticks with is going to compete, and he's not going back down from some of the top players. And and I think uh, when you put him with, you know, a championship-caliber team, you need a guy that doesn't really care. And not so much Ron Artest-ish, but you hmm. know, he can step up and, you know, probably form a mold in that sense. But, uh, you know, definitely. It'll be, you know, the Grizzlies are going to have a, you know, big loss on their hand, you know, one of the biggest since Chandler Parsons left. So. Wow. <laughs> that opinion. felt sarcastic. <laughs> I, right. I just, it's it's going to take a lot more than $95 million, Evan, to get those. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> really not. I joke about Dylan a lot, but there's a place in the league for him. And a guy who takes the toughest assignment on defense every night, who's willing to be a physical defender in that route. And, and he shot 39% from three this year. He's, he's improved in that aspect. Look, I don't know if I've ever seen him take an open shot. He just seems to only want to take contested <laughs> yeah. shots out of rhythm. Likes to make uh, it challenging. But there are worse players in this league, and, and you can do worse with a defender off your bench. I actually think Boston would be an interesting place for him Whoa. with the way they play and the way they let their guys play freely on offense and the defense. It would be interesting to see if he makes his way out there. I, I think a fresh culture for, for both sides. I think Memphis and Dylan Brooks. I think Dylan Brooks would, would probably benefit from being in a different culture, as would Memphis, to turn the page. Yep. He, and plus, he has time now to sort of reinvent himself. Like Madonna. Like, come back as a completely different person. Get a new fresh. stylist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Get a new stylist. No jorts. <laughs> ever. Uh, taking a quick break here. When we come back, Shams with the latest scoop on Chris Paul and that groin injury. When we come back. 
man. This guy. Yep, looks like it. That's Jokic for anybody who's confused. Run it up, run it back, run it up.